So in this chapter we will talk about marine food web structure. So how do marine ecosystems work? You will learn things about marine food webs that are very different from land. For example, you will learn that if you eat a mackerel, that's equivalent to um, eating a wolf that previously has eaten a fox. So this is how marine systems work very differently from land. If you look at the, a bucket uh, or a bottle of ocean water, usually that's very transparent and you ask yourself, so what actually, where does life come from that eventually will lead to populations of fish that can be harvested and actually people were asking that for quite a long time uh, uh, way into uh, past the medieval times and it was only in 1887 that Victor Hansen took a plankton net that's a net with very fine meshes uh, went out sift through ocean waters and with the aid of a microscope found tiny organisms tiny plants that are actually at the base of the food webs and uh, through the process of photosynthesis as we know it from land they build up organic matter that can then be consumed by secondary consumers uh, which are uh, if you will the cows of the sea tiny crustaceans called copepods so since the plants with which the food web starts are very small also you the first consumers um, have to be uh, quite small. And um, then those tiny crustaceans um, and also larvae of uh, worms and mussels that also have their larvae in the plankton feeding on phytoplankton, they are then consumed by still relatively tiny fish, so either juvenile fish uh, or small anchovy, small uh, pelagic fish. So we have already now three steps in a typical open ocean marine food chain. Uh, that would lead to still a small uh, fish that we didn't uh, yet want to put on our plate. Um, meaning that uh, open ocean food webs usually take several steps up to five or six steps uh, to end then in a big tuna or in a large shark. So why is this important? So why is that very significant? for understanding marine productivity in general. So now in each conversion, when one organism eats another one, about 90% of the biomass gets lost simply by respiration, by the maintenance uh, um, metabolism of the organisms. And only 10% of the matter get, gets transferred to the next trophic level. And that means if we eat a tuna steak of 100 gram if we trickle if we if we go down all the five trophic levels back to the base of the food web the phytoplankton uh, we need to build up one ton of uh, phytoplankton biomass to uh, sustain this 100 gram steak of tuna and now you can hopefully see the significance it means that although oceans cover very vast areas and you may think that fish populations uh, cannot uh, really be overexploited. This is very much the case because the amount of biomass that goes uh, into a fish population is, is uh, very much reduced by the very long way through a relatively long food chain. And that's again very different to land where we can directly eat cattle. That's the first consumer directly eating on the primary producers. So having four trophic steps less than our tuna. So to give you another example, if you put a mackerel on your plate, this would correspond to on land on eating a wolf who has entirely fed on foxes because a mackerel is already the fourth trophic level. And uh, so we would be actually the eaters of wolf eaters uh, and so would be the tuna. And uh, now you also understand why the largest animals uh, among the fishes and among uh, the, um, the mammals are filter feeders that by means of their filtering organs, either the baleen with the whales or gill arches that are modified with a very large basket shark, go directly for the zooplankton, for the first consumers. They themselves then being the second consumer, this is because they they spare all the 
upper steps of the food chain of the trophic levels and this way they can uh, feed on much more biomass that's available and this is the only way how they can maintain their very large biomasses. We now come from the open ocean to more coastal systems. Coastal marine systems are generally much more productive than open ocean systems. Uh, one reason is that we have a threefold input into the food chain. It's not just the plankton that is also there, but uh, we also have in addition plants that grow either on rock like algae or on sediments like seagrasses. And then we have tiny unicellular algae that themselves grow on the sediment surface or on the larger plants themselves. And also we can have very short food chains. Uh, the plant material uh, uh, gets degraded into detritus and like earthworms, uh, worms in coastal sediments, they directly eat on the primary productivity and also bivalves uh, filter directly the plankton, meaning that they as first consumers are the food for say a place, a flatfish or a cod. Then we have uh, only three part-tied food web that already leads to something that humankind can eat, much shorter than a typical pelagic food web. Most of the ocean is much deeper than the sunlight can enter. So even in the clearest water like the Sagasso Sea, sunlight can only enter 150 to 200 meters to um, sustain photosynthesis. Um, that means that most of the ocean that's several kilometers deep so it relies on the production of the upper sunlit layer and um, so dead particles that are sinking down from the upper sunlit layer be it uh, uh, dead phytoplankton or the feces uh, from other organisms that have fed each other <coughs> sinks uh, the long way down to the deep sea bottom and on that way there are specialized organisms like the vampire squid that are specialized on, <coughs> on uh, going after that sinking um, menu that has still uh, some calories to digest. And once <coughs> uh, this rain is down at the deep sea bottom, it has uh, gone down to 1% or less of the digestible biomass that has been there in the sunlit upper surface. This then again means that many of the deep sea organisms have to adapt to extreme food shortage. There are very low population densities and many other adaptations like longevity and very slow growth uh, that, um, that these deep sea organisms need to survive. So I hope in this uh, chapter we have learned some basic structural features of marine food webs that are very different to those on land. Generally marine uh, food chains um, that constitutes those webs um, uh, of who eats whom they are longer uh, than on land. That means that uh, sustainable harvest of many populations is actually much lower as what you would think uh, at the first glance. We have many examples of uh, productive marine ecosystems, mainly in coastal areas where several nutritional sources come together and also nutrient levels are higher as in the open ocean.